What do you think dads would say is the hardest part about parenting a child with food allergies? And what advice do you think dads would give other dads of newly diagnosed children? Stay tuned for today's episode of Exploring Food Allergy Families as we talk about food allergy dads. Welcome to Exploring Food Allergy Families, a podcast with real talk, relatable conversations, and practical tips focused on navigating the impacts that food allergies have on families, relationships, and mental health. I'm Tamara Hubbard, licensed therapist and the host of Exploring Food Allergy Families. Please remember that while this podcast offers general advice, it should never replace medical or mental health care guidance from your own healthcare team. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Exploring Food Allergy Families. Today, the topic is food allergy dads. We're gonna explore what dads think about parenting a child with food allergies by reviewing some of the responses from a recent survey that I put out in the community. Let me just start by saying, their responses were amazing. Some themes won't surprise you, but others, including the tips that they gave, will give you a whole new appreciation for these dads. As I was preparing for this episode, I not only reviewed the responses given on the survey, but I also found myself thinking about how dads are portrayed on the TV shows we watch. Too often, people think of moms and dads in these very stereotypical ways. So I thought about the characters from TV shows of the past, and I'm sure you're gonna remember all of these characters. Let's start with Cliff Huxtable. Although he had a serious side, especially in his role as a doctor, he was lovable and fun. His kids always seemed willing to talk and, and come to him with any of their problems because he had this ability to stay calm under pressure, but still make it a fun experience. Not quite sure how he did it, but it was really impressive. Or how about Dan Connor from Roseanne? He was a hardworking and reliable dad, but perhaps not very demonstrative or open with his emotions. Deep feelings and anything relating to normal teenage girl topics definitely made him feel uncomfortable. What about Danny Tanner from Full House? He had incredible domestic skills, which put mine to shame, and the ability to navigate the tough situation he was presented with, which was single parenthood. And of course, his talks often concluded with a great big hug. Despite being completely different in so many ways, all three of these sitcom dads had something in common. They were wonderful parents. They were present and hands-on in raising their kids, and although they'd approach it very differently, they all found their own ways of teaching their kids the life lessons they needed to learn. To my knowledge, there's not been a sitcom where the dad has been a parent of a child with food allergy, but maybe we'll get one of those soon. I received my master's in marriage and family therapy, so I'm always so interested in the interactions that take place between various family members. But I also find myself interested in how each family member navigates their role within the family and how it makes them feel. Not too long ago, I started to wonder how dads felt about parenting a child with food allergies, since it seems that much of what we tend to see discussed online is more relevant or geared towards moms. Some of the things I was curious about were, are dads inclined to speak up about their experiences? What did they find were the hardest aspects of parenting a child with food allergies? And of course, had parenting a child with food allergies impacted their marriages or relationships in various ways, either positively or negatively. So I decided to gather feedback to learn more, and what better way to get these insights than straight from the sources, the dads. On a quick side note, I've got more things that I'm curious about, so I'll be putting together more surveys and putting them out in the community in the coming months. Stay tuned. But for now, I am so excited to share the insights into the results from the Food Allergy Dad Experience Survey. My goal was to get at least 25 dads to participate, and of course I'd hoped for more, but I was absolutely blown away by the level of participation and enthusiasm for this topic because 90 dads took the survey. While that meant hours of reviewing data and identifying themes, it was so worth it. Their responses offer a much better understanding of how they perceive parenting a child with food allergies and the impacts that it has on their lives. First, I want to thank all of the dads who took the time to share their thoughts and, of course, to the many spouses and partners who likely encouraged these dads to participate. 
I'd also like to thank the food allergy community as a whole, as so many of you helped circulate the survey, which as a result has given us incredible insights to explore. So without further ado, let's jump right in and explore what these dads had to say. The Food Allergy Dad Experience Survey asked the following questions. Number one, do you feel food allergy dads speak up enough about their experiences parenting a child with food allergies? Number two, as a dad, what's one of the hardest things about managing your child's food allergy? Number three, is there an aspect of food allergy management that you feel you manage better or more confidently than your partner does? Number four, conversely, is there an aspect of food allergy management that you feel your partner manages better or more confidently than you do? Number five, has parenting a child managing food allergies impacted your marriage or relationship, either positively or negatively, and if so, how? Number six, what is one food allergy management guideline or decision that you and your partner don't always agree on? Number seven, what would be one tip or piece of advice you'd share with a dad of a newly diagnosed child? And then they had a chance to share any final thoughts. Just as I highlighted how Cliff Huxtable, Dan Connor, and Danny Tanner approached parenting differently, you'll notice that the themes in these results highlight that dads may approach food allergy parenting differently as well. They also have a variety of feelings on the topics that were asked. But one thing is crystal clear from just reading their thoughts. They all love their children immensely. So question one asked if dads felt that they spoke up enough about their food allergy parenting experiences. And the results were pretty clear on this one. 27% said yes, while 73% said no. I don't think that these results are particularly surprising and I bet you'd agree. If I were to guess why most of the dads said that they don't feel that they speak up enough about their parenting experiences, common reasons would include that they may not be as involved within the food allergy community as their partners are, either due to time constraints or lack of desire, or maybe they don't feel they have the right place to share these thoughts since many of the support groups or conferences are typically dominated by moms and women. However, given the fact that so many dads are readily willing to share their honest thoughts and feelings about their parenting experiences, it suggests that there's an opportunity to create more avenues for dads to connect and support one another. Of course, these outlets would likely have to look different than the traditional ones, more in line with how dads feel and how they'd like to connect and share information. I would definitely encourage dads who feel that they have knowledge to share to actively think about ways in which they can do so, because there's a real benefit in these connections between dads. Additionally, their insights and tips would be especially beneficial for dads of newly diagnosed children or dads that are going through times of transition. Next, I reviewed the responses from the second question, which asked the hardest aspects of parenting a child with food allergies, and clear themes definitely emerged. These themes included feelings of worry, fear, trust, frustration, guilt, and self-doubt, as well as increased concerns about inclusion, tasks relating to eating, and impacts on relationships and co-parenting efforts. So let's take a deeper look at these themes. As expected, the anxiety and worry related to all aspects of raising a child with a food allergy. However, fear was a common emotion noted when commenting about reactions, bullying, their child's sadness about feeling different, or if others didn't take the allergy seriously. Increased stress and feelings of guilt and self-doubt were also noted, particularly related to the following aspects. Remembering or forgetting epinephrine, determining the appropriate response to a reaction, eating their child's allergens, seeing their child suffer, being less available than they'd like, or the risk of making the wrong decisions. These dads also expressed concern about trusting others' knowledge of food allergies and the ability to take the allergy seriously, but also felt trusting their child's choices when out of their care was hard too. And unsurprisingly so, tasks related to navigating eating, understanding and trusting food labeling, finding safe foods, and the time and creativity needed for planning meals were all labeled as some of the hardest parts of food allergy parenting as well. So far, you might be thinking that all of these themes are pretty common and likely align with how their partners feel, but the next two areas highlighted may shed some light on topics that dads may not always explore very openly, their frustrations and navigating the co-parenting and relationship aspects. Based on this survey, dads tended to be frustrated by not being taken seriously being seen as babying their child 
or not being viewed as a competent allergy parent. Additionally frustrating was others' lack of knowledge or even their own limited knowledge. The hardest parts of navigating co-parenting with food allergies were the following. Defining parental roles and delegating allergy care responsibilities. Respectful communication, especially if not on the same page or not in agreement with their partner. Determining each other's strengths and being able to trust each other when taking the lead on any given allergy care task. The stigma that the mother knows all about allergy care, which may therefore imply that dads aren't as knowledgeable and not being as included as they would like to in navigating allergy care. Additionally, some dads noted that educating family members, especially those that just don't get it, are one of the hardest parts of food allergy parenting. I don't know about you, but I was so impressed by how honest these dads were about their, their feelings and their thoughts related to food allergy parenting and the relational aspects of it as well. It definitely put a lot of thought into their answers. Next, there were three questions that explored the co-parenting and relationship aspects in a bit more depth. Dads were asked which allergy care tasks they felt more confident in than their partner and vice versa, as well as whether or not they felt food allergy parenting impacted their relationships, either positively or negatively. Of the dads who responded to the question asking about their own confidence, about 36% said they don't feel they're more confident in any particular food allergy parenting tasks or that they and their partner were an equal team, or that their partner was actually better at certain tasks. The next two tier of responses tied at 10% each. 10% of the dads felt that they were more confident than their partners at managing and navigating the stress, anxiety, and emotions of food allergy parenting. And 10% believed that they navigated the medical aspects of food allergy parenting more confidently, including doctor visits, finding allergy treatments, and handling reactions more calmly. Now, when it came to their thoughts on which aspects of food allergy parenting they felt their partners were more confident with, these were their responses. 25% felt their partners were more confident in all or most aspects of food allergy parenting. 23% felt that their partners were much better at research, keeping informed, and staying connected. And 15% believed that their partners were better with the day-to-day -day management of allergies. The answer is given for the final co-parenting related question focused on areas in which they and their partner didn't know as agree. 32% said they were typically on the same page with their partner or didn't disagree on anything major. Another 32% felt navigating risk levels resulted in differing opinions with their partner. This included deciding comfort levels with precautionary labels like may contains, whether to allow allergens in the house, trying new foods, deciding where to travel on vacation, and how much autonomy to give their child. And finally, 20% said they tended to disagree on decisions related to eating outside of the home. Now, the final two questions asked for tips they'd share with dads of newly diagnosed kids or any last thoughts. I have to say, these dads had a lot to share. Many answers were pretty empowering and covered themes that encouraged patience, advocacy, education, and approaching parenting as a team and so many responses included, you've got this. But rather than summarizing these comments, I felt it would be more impactful to share these dad's words and read some that stood out. So here they are. This one had me laughing, but it's absolutely true. Read Everyday Cool with Food Allergies by Michael Pissner to you and with your child. It will help both of you. Get a cool EpiPen holster and clip that bad Larry onto your cargo shorts with pride pretty true. These tips really highlighted the need for teamwork and support when it came to co-parenting with food allergies. One dad said, it's easy to let mom be the do-it-all superhero, but that will only lead to stress and unhappiness in the end. Make an effort to work as a team and listen to what each other says as well as doesn't say. Very insightful. Another dad said, forget about traditional mom-dad roles, take charge. Yet another dad said, support your spouse. You're in this together. And always, always remember to bring the allergy meds anytime you leave the house. Sage advice. Another dad shared, work with your spouse, not against them. I love that one. And finally, another dad said, be patient with your spouse. So as you can see, teamwork is a key theme that's important to these dads. Educating yourself with reputable information, finding support, 
and standing strong when others don't understand were other themes with these tips. Here's what dad said about these topics. One dad said, breathe. Practice using the EpiPens and reinforce your boundaries with families and friends. They won't understand, make them understand with clear guidelines. Another dad said, prevention is key, but always have a plan in place. Another said, trust your allergist or doctor over social media groups. And yet another dad said, don't be afraid to ask questions, even if you think they'll sound dumb. The better informed you are, the more prepared you'll feel. So very true. Another dad said, reach out to other allergy parents. They will help you feel less alone. Your family might not understand, so be prepared to advocate for your child and to set and hold boundaries that may upset your family. Another tip was talk about it. Gather information extensively to help you be informed and feel more confident, but from health professionals and reputable medical slash scientific sources only. Another dad shared, research, read, listen to other experienced parents and not feel guilty or apologize for decisions to best care for your child. Some people just won't get it and you need to move on. Great advice there. And another dad shared, it's not going to be easy and you're going to have some drastic changes in your life, but it's not going to be as hard as you might originally think it would be. Also, don't you and your spouse try to navigate this on your own. There's plenty of resources available and the food allergy community as a whole is very helpful. Also, give yourself some grace and know that even if it feels like the rest of the world disagrees with you on how you navigate things, as long as you and your spouse are looking out for the best interests of your food allergy child, that's all that matters. Amazing advice there. The following tips encouraged dads to remember the important things, love, coping strategies, and a growth mindset. These tips are, number one, breathe first, educate yourself second, and just love your child. This is a whole life issue that you will deal with, but don't let it ruin the cool things about being a parent. Another dad said, attitude is everything. Everyone has challenges. This is our particular challenge. We can still intentionally enjoy life and give our kids the opportunities that they deserve and be able to socialize with friends and family. We must still always proceed with caution. Fabulous advice there. Another dad shared, yes, your life will change, but you'll get used to it. And his or her allergies do not define who your child is. They are so much more than their allergies. Get educated, get a routine, and become a partner with your spouse. You cannot do it when you two disagree on raising a child with allergies. I love that advice. Another dad said, don't let the worry overwhelm you. You will learn to be a great allergy dad. So empowering there. Yet another dad said, be calm. Your wife and you will have evolving emotions. Know that the emotions will pass. Even if there is no cure for the allergy, you will all learn to live with it and find your new normal. So true. Another dad shared, it's okay to freak out every now and then. Then get yourself together, do some research and spread awareness. And another dad shared, they never asked for this. You are their only protector, their only voice. You are their world and they need all of your patience and attention to take the best care of them. Because they can't do it on their own, at least at first. They trust you to keep them safe. They need your love and support to let them feel secure in knowing you are there for them the whole way. Please, let's not let them down. Ugh, the love and care from those statements from those dads just melts my heart and I hope they're touching your, your heart as well. And finally, these last thoughts from the dads made a lasting impression on me, so felt worthy of sharing with you. One dad said, it's okay to be scared. Reach out for help and talk with others. Don't keep it all inside of you. Talk with your wife and keep communicating. There's no shame in asking for help. We see a therapist. I think that's great advice. Seek extra support if you need it. Yet another dad shared, kids are resilient, so teach them that their allergies are like their eye color or hair color or favorite color. It can be a path to finding something new and doesn't have to be as limiting as society would like to make you believe. Another shared, often I feel like I'm ignored as a parent, 
because it's always mom's this and mom's that. I know not all dads are the same, but I put everything into my child and my family. I feel that dads like me are left at, left in the shadows and need support as well. Thank you for sharing that. Another dad said, speak up and educate other dads. So the moms are not always seen as the allergy mom being overprotective. And another dad shared, make sure that your child is knowledgeable or more knowledgeable as you about the issue. Great advice there. And this last one made me giggle because it's the truth. And I'm curious how many of you are thinking, yep, I know what this is like, we've been through this. The dad said, it sure seems overwhelming at first, but you will adapt. Also, figure out a method so you don't leave the EpiPen in the car because you will do it and your wife will freak out. So there you have it, the general themes and responses from the dads who took the Food Allergy Dad Experience Survey. I hope you found these insights as enlightening as I have. If you're a dad listening to this episode, did you feel these results aligned with your own experiences? And if you're their partner, did these themes seem to fit with your partner's experiences? If you'd like to read all of the anonymous responses to the questions on the survey, you can check them out on the latest blog post at the Food Allergy Counselor Directory and website. You can find that at www.foodallergycounselor.com backslash blog. And trust me, they're all worth reading. Also, in an upcoming episode, I'll be chatting with an experienced food allergy dad about his own parenting journey, as well as tips he would share and important considerations for food allergy dads. As we wrap up this episode, here's a few key takeaway thoughts and tips. It's truly important to take the time to check in with dads too. While many dads may see their role as being the supportive partner who offers unwavering strength, it's important that we don't discount their feelings, which may include fear and worry despite them not verbalizing it. Teamwork and trying to be on the same page or at least within the same book is clearly important to dads. While it's understandable that parents may not always agree on approaches or how to navigate situations, Open communication is key, and I'll actually be exploring this particular topic in more depth in an episode in the near future, so stay tuned. Dads want to be an active partner in their child's food allergy care. They want knowledge and opportunities to become a confident food allergy parent as well. Therefore, even if they're extremely busy and we assume that they're unavailable, invite them to the allergy appointments. Have those hard conversations about navigating the aspects of allergy care that you may not see eye to eye on. Start that from the very beginning. Sometimes food allergy moms may overfunction, maybe out of necessity, since we may be the parent that's around the most, but it may also be related to the fear of letting go of control or because we're the most knowledgeable about food allergies. If that dynamic is workable for your co-parenting relationship, that's okay. But I always encourage parents not to assume anything. Rather, take a step back and a real honest look at the parenting dynamics in your relationship. Again, have those conversations. If you're a dad, do you feel like you have the knowledge or opportunities you need to develop your confidence in navigating allergies? If not, what needs to change? What do you need more or less of to make this happen? And if you're their partner, are you truly giving them the opportunity to get the hang of this whole allergy parenting gig? You both can be the change that you wish to see. And finally, parenting a child with a chronic condition has the potential to strain a marriage or relationship, as it's another layer on top of the typical stressors. I'll be exploring this more in depth in an upcoming episode when I chat with an allergy parenting couple, so I won't say much more on this topic for now. However, I felt it was really important to mention that some dads made it very clear that the lack of communication, differing approaches, and increased stresses related to allergy parenting were major factors in their separation or divorces so it was worth mentioning. Thanks again to all the dads who participated in this survey and to all the allergy dads out there. Please know that your voices are important within your families, within your relationships, and within the community. Thanks for joining me for today's episode of Exploring Food Allergy Families. Remember, feedback is a gift, so please feel free to connect with me via social media or through the Food Allergy Counselor website. And if you're enjoying this podcast so far, think others might too, and don't want to miss future episodes, don't forget to subscribe and share. There are so many more interesting topics we'll be exploring. Trust me, we're just beginning. Until we connect for the next episode, 
Be good to yourselves and take care. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of Exploring Food Allergy Families. Be sure to subscribe via your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss future ones. And if you're looking for an allergy-informed behavioral health care provider or for additional resources on any of the topics discussed in these podcasts, visit the Food Allergy Counselor directory and website at www.foodallergycounselor.com.